Okay, so this is going to be a short one-shot tutorial about combining materials and particle systems. So the thought is to create like a uh, transparent orb that has like a center of power inside of it. So how do we do that? Well, start with game object, go to 3D object and choose sphere. Click on the main camera and there's a sphere. Now, when you create an object, it has this default material on it. We're going to create a new one. So right click, create material, and let's call it glass mat. Where it says rendering mode, changes the transparent. And for albedo, click on the color. And for the alpha, bring it way, way, way down. Now, just drag and drop that. You can either put it right on the sphere like that. Yeah, we'll just do it that way for now. There's a couple ways to apply it. And now let's click on the main camera. And suddenly you can see you've got a transparent sphere. And now you can mess around with that a little bit. Like if you want a surface gleam, what you can do is you can actually apply a uh, 2D sprite image to be wrapped around it. So maybe if you kind of want to fake a light source on it, or like I said, maybe you want to put like a prism along it, you can do that. Uh, you can also still modify this some more. So if you click on the glass mat, you can see down here basically what it looks like. Maybe you want it to be more metallic. You can do that. And click on the main camera. You can see by doing that, it's really not transparent now. But maybe you want to have more smoothness. Definitely looks glassier now. So again, click on the camera. Still transparent, but now you can more distinctly see this reflection. Or, um, sorry, I should really say refraction because it's passing through it. It's doing both. It's reflecting and refracting light. So let's go ahead and run that. So you've got yourself a um, circle, an orb. Now, say you want something inside the orb. That's easy. Since it's transparent, you can just put something inside of it and it'll show up. So game object, particle system, and we really want something that's going to move out in all directions. So if we go to shape, and for the shape we choose... Also sphere, so it's moving out in all directions. Now we're going to make a bunch of changes, though. So the size is way too big. So the start size, like, let's make that like 0.1. Last way too long, make that like 1. Start speed, also make that 1. And I've mentioned before that when you're um, making changes to a particle system, it's an awful lot like sculpting. Little changes here and there. And when you change one thing, one attribute, you wind up having to adjust another one. Like often when I find myself making the size smaller, I wind up having to compensate by increasing the emission. Now that's still not quite what I want. That's still spreading out too far. So let's again shorten the speed let's make that like 0.4 so it's not moving as much and let's stop that lifetime around 0.5 you could also shrink the radius since it's a sphere whoops not that there we go Let's take a look to see how that looks. Now they do spread outside of it, so it's not quite right yet. So let's go back to the particle system. We'll have them shrink because they're actually still a little bit too big. So let's make this 0.08. And it's still moving a little bit too far. So let's make this 
and also we're going to change the size over time so size over lifetime click there right click anywhere here just so you have a keyframe that way it doesn't start shrinking right away and then drag this one down so here the size doesn't change and then it starts to change that's why you create the keyframe so let's check again big difference that makes now it's not readily evident because there's not much behind it or around it but that is truly inside of it so let's see if we take the director's camera so to speak and we move this around you can see that yes indeed it is inside of it We'll tweak this just ever so slightly more. Start lifetime, we'll have it be 0.45. And when you're dealing with really small numbers like this, it doesn't take much to make a difference because reducing this by 0.05 may not seem like much, but since the starting number was 0.5, that's a 10% reduction. So sometimes you really have to think in terms of percent, not absolute amount. Okay, so a couple other things that we can do. We Here we had, um, for the size of a lifetime, okay, what we did down here was uh, we created this keyframe, so it starts off as full size. So let's create another keyframe, and then take the starting point and make it even, make it smaller so in other words rather than just only appearing for a full size it appears very small so you don't really notice it grows out stays that size and then grows back in so it should make for a smoother animation see it's subtle but it, it has more of a kind of a twinkling feel to it that it's um kind of bursting into uh uh into the scene and then uh disappearing so little things like that make a huge difference last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some color over time and this makes a huge difference too depending on what you're trying to color um, say you want this to be a power-up so based on what colors you would do would it would suggest what kind of uh, power-up it is say you want it to be fire so let's go to color of a lifetime Click on this, click on the first one here, click here once you've done that, and we're going to choose, say, like yellow. Then over here, we click on this one, click again, we're going to choose red. So now you can see it starts as yellow and goes over to red. Now watch what this looks like. So the red really doesn't get a chance to exist, and that's because the red is happening really when it's on its way out. Now, one thing that you could do is you could make this even slower, but have it last longer. Like I said, you're going to find attributes that really pair together. So let's reduce that to 0.2 but have it last 0.7 and see how that looks. So now you're getting a, a greater sense of the color. Still don't see a lot of red. So what you can do for that, for size of a lifetime, you can take this keyframe and move it out so it takes longer before it disappears. So now it's going to disappear much more steeply. And now you should see more red. And it is. It's subtle, but there's definitely more red there now. Because now the particle um, doesn't disappear until uh, closer to the end of its life. So that would be, say, maybe uh, you've given someone a fire power up. And what you can do is, once you've created this, take that particle system put it into the sphere and then you could just copy this 
paste it, move it, and now let's take the camera, move it up a little bit, back a little bit, rotate it down a little bit so you can see them. And you can just like rinse and repeat and keep using that power up over and over again. So that's a, that really gives you a better sense of the fact that you really have uh, this particle system inside of the orb. So I think that's about it for this one. Um, the only thing that I'd want to mention is you can take the sphere. And if you take this and you drag, it, drag, drag and drop it down to your asset area, that's now what's known as a prefab. You can now spawn it or instantiate it as many times as you want. You can also uh, copy it. So um, just as I used that one, we'll delete that. This one, maybe you want the particle system to be so it's called color over lifetime. And maybe you want it to go from, so again, click over to the left there. Maybe you want it to go from like a light aqua to like a dark blue. Because maybe it's an ice power. And let's run that. Okay. So now you can just drag and drop that one and put it down here. And now you've got two. So now you have both. Um, a fire and an ice. We'll just bring the first one back in so you can see that that one's unchanged. So see you got a fire and you have an ice and you didn't have to really reinvent the wheel. All you had to do was change um, you made a duplicate, made a few changes to the color that's being cycled through and now you have a, a, a different power. up. One could be fire, one could be ice. So that's about it for this. That's really all I wanted to demonstrate was the fact that you can mix and match uh, uh, some of these uh, objects. In this case, an orb, uh, you can mix and match it with a particle system. And um, by doing so, um, you can then, uh, because it's transparent, you can then put something inside of it. And then you can, maybe you could even put like uh, something, uh, another particle system on top of this. So like you maybe want like, some kind of steam or some kind of like aura coming out of it. So let's quickly do that. I, I hadn't thought about doing that. So game object, particle system, and this one's a little bit tougher. So let's go to shape. We'll keep it as a cone, but we'll change the angle. I'm calling it angle because that's what we just changed right here. We'll shrink the radius. And now let's make sure these are centered. So uh, 0 0.755. 0. 0.755. And then we'll just kind of eyeball the Z. Okay, so what we're going to do now is very similar. Start size, going to shrink. Start lifetime, going to shrink. Start speed, also going to reduce. Increase emission. And the reason why that blanked out like that is because we exceeded the max particles. So it's important to be mindful that uh, you don't exceed that. So we increase that, but I can see it's going way too far up anyway. So. We can have this last not nearly as long and have it move slower yet. And let's actually make this transparent. So in this case, I'm using start color.
And let's actually have, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the start size. So we're gonna undo what I just did. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to size of a lifetime. And now we shrink it at the very beginning, kind of like the other one. So it's kind of like this fog building up. So probably a bit excessive. So uh, let's let's reduce that rate down to like 400, and let's have that size be like 0.8. But to adjust, we need that to start a little bit bigger, and we need that to get a little bit smaller. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. So now you can kind of have like this gas or aura coming off of this. And if you really want to, you go to, just as we had the initial color, be like uh, we, we changed the um, transparency, the alpha, you can go to color over lifetime. And just as the bottom changes the colors, the top changes the, the alpha. We can have that just disappear when it gets to the top. So now you have this kind of gas aura coming off of it. And you would just do the same thing. You would take that, drag and drop it into the sphere. And now, um, and now when you move the sphere, see everything moves with it. So uh, that easy. You can... Um, It's uh, that easy to combine materials and to combine particle systems to have all kinds of effects like that. All right, so I think that's about it for this demo.